first car pushing through a mass of people lining the route for miles. More than 200,000 saw the cars set out and just as many will see them return to navigator Murray Higgs. McLaughlin got park and more people. And here's six... One of Sunny Sound's film units leaves Townsville ahead of the contestants on the second long leg of the thrilling Red X trial. The tough haul to Mount Isa. The record is 19 and a half hours. The schedule is 16. And he's all set to beat it. Outback residents are bewildered by the city slicker's speed. By the time he's finished waving, the car's a mile away. There's Bill McLaughlin in a Ford Custom Line, one of the favorites, and making amazingly fast time over the dry road. Not far past this point, a change signpost diverted him 75 miles out of his way. E.B. Perkins Rover is number 13, but not unlucky. And there's Lex Davidson's Holden, taking chances, but making time. Some of the road is straight and smooth and it becomes a speed track with not a pedestrian for a hundred miles. Jack Davy, he's really giving it a go. Well, all the goats aren't driving. This lonely land of wide open spaces is ideal for a reliability trial. Next year, Australia may see some of the world's most famous drivers competing. There are plenty of hazards, straying cattle and even bounding kangaroos have caused accidents. Look out cows or you'll be skim milk. It's dry out west and the racing cars leave twin trails of dust on their 600 mile run. Some competitors have to push and there's a long way to go. Others fly past, stopping only for more petrol or water. They ask directions and advice from old identities, who frankly think they're nuts. And then they're off again on the thrilling test of car and driver. Accidents have been few considering the conditions. One of the unlucky ones is Jack Murray, or his car was. Jack himself is unhurt, but he watches his car being towed off to the nearest garage. And then he has a few words to say, which, unfortunately, we can't let you hear. The road to Mount Isa is tough, but it's not as tough as the trial organizers thought. The cars and drivers take the ditches and corrugated surface in their stride. And on the good stretches, they are more than making up for lost time. Spare a thought for the Cine Sound boys who brought you this picture. It's not exactly a joyride bouncing uphill over rocks, they're not in the race, but they have to be up with the leaders to catch the drama of this unique trial. They had 14 hours sleep in six days. Hold on to your hats, we're going down. There's Mount Isa. We've come 609 miles in 14 hours, and are the contestants glad? They'll get 12 hours rest here, the sissies. Then they're away again, and another Cine Sound cameraman flies along the route to Darwin, 1098 miles away. He films the cars racing along the bitumen highway built when the Japs threatened Australia's north. And now, Darwin. And the early arrivals are already parked in the control point. Even though the cars start at three minute intervals, many hours must separate the first and last car because it's so big a field. Once they enter control, drivers are not permitted to do any work on their vehicles whatsoever. Some of the cars averaged more than 60 miles an hour to Darwin. A Jaguar hit 95 miles an hour, a speed which is considered bad for Sunday drivers. There's 36 hours rest here, and even time for a shave. Then, after the big sleep, they make for the beach because it will be many, many miles before they'll see this much water again. It's early spring down south, 95 degrees up here. It'll be a long way between drinks, too, so they have one for the road to Alice. There's Peter Antill on the left. He is still favourite to win the trial and has made the fastest time so far. They're almost halfway on the round Australia drive. And there's Grandma Conway. 
63, and still up with the field. Someone else will take out the prizes, but for our money, Grandma Conway wins the reliability contest. And tomorrow, right down the continent from north to south.